Hi everyone! As you may or may not know, a few months ago I got a job at a sewing factory in Montreal. You can watch my video on my initial thoughts on the job, it's in the description. But in this video I'm going to share a few of the techniques I've learned. The first thing I'm going to show you is sewing a label. So we have this rectangular label here, normally it would have the company logo on it. Maybe it's going on the front of a sweater, inside a coat, wherever. The placement of the label on the thing we're sewing it to is indicated by these drill holes. That's how it's typically done in an industrial setting. You're not marking things individually with chalk, you use drill holes. Now I'm not just going to sew the label directly on like this. I need to fold the raw edges under, which I have to do myself, it's not done for me. So I fold each side between a quarter of an inch and three eighths to conceal the raw edges. This is obviously a lot easier to do if the fabric I'm using holds a crease really well. Some fabrics don't, they're very crease resistant, and we're not allowed to use pins or an iron to hold the shape, so that also makes it harder. So now I'm going to start sewing at this hole, making sure that the top left corner is fully covering the hole, and now I'll sew. As I'm sewing, I make sure of three things. First of all, that the label is lying flat at all times. We don't want a bubbly label that doesn't lie flat. Second of all, this bottom right corner always needs to be in the right position to cover the second hole. Occasionally I'll be sewing along and realize that I haven't been paying attention to that and now the hole is uncovered and I have to take everything out and do it again. And finally, I always make sure that I'm sewing very close, about 1 16th of an inch from the edge. I always slow down and use the hand wheel when I get to a corner to make sure I get as close as possible without going over the edge, otherwise it becomes a quality control issue and I have to take it out and do it again. And there we go! Before I move on, I want to let you know about some other things that I'm up to. I just launched a channel membership, it costs 99 cents Canadian per month, that's like 75 cents American. If you join the membership, in addition to supporting me, you also get to vote on what kind of content I make next, and I may also offer discount codes from time to time on guides, checklists, courses, etc. that I'm developing. So have a look at the link in the description box below for more info about that. I'm also developing an ultimate seam finishes guide, so please sign up to be notified by email when that comes out, the link is in the description box as well. Alright, the second thing I'm going to show you is a bit crazy. So let's say we're making a pair of quilted mittens with color block panels that have some kind of polyester or down fill. I have one piece of my mittens sewn to the sack that contains the fill. There are two things I want to do now. I want to sew a stitch to quilt all these layers together because that's the style, it's a quilted mitten, and because we don't want all the fill to fall to the bottom, we want it to be evenly distributed throughout the mitten. The second thing I want to do is to stitch this seam allowance from sewing the two color block panels together down towards the bottom because we don't want it shifting around inside the mitten or we don't want it sticking up and looking weird. Now you might be wondering, why didn't you stitch down the seam allowance before sewing it to the fill piece? And I don't have an exact answer to that, but I suspect it's because you would have like too many lines and they'd be ugly. Like you'd have the seam line from sewing the color block panels together, and then you'd also have the stitch line from stitching down the seam allowance, and you'd have the quilting line, and altogether they'd probably just look weird. So now I'm going to quilt the mitten and sew down the seam allowance all in one shot. How am I actually going to do this? Well, first of all, before I even started sewing, I finger press the crap out of the seam allowance so that it's facing the right direction from the get-go. Another thing I sometimes do is try to roll the seam allowance at the top where I'm going to start sewing and then pull the bottom taut as I'm sewing to hopefully encourage it to lie in the right direction. Finally, if it's just not cooperating and won't lie down in the correct way, I can open up the seams here and stick my fingers in and coax it in the right direction. Alright, the last thing I'm going to show you is not something I was explicitly trained to do, but a weird habit I've developed. Sewing really, really close to the edge. Like 1 32nd of an inch away from the edge. I was doing some work for a friend recently who has her own clothing business. It's called Wyatt House Design Co. Check it out. And I was understitching one of her pieces and she was like, you don't need to sew that close to the edge. And I was like, true. Why am I sewing so close to the edge? And I think it's because for my job we sometimes have to base things. Like say I'm making a waistband for a skirt and it has sew-in interfacing, so I'm going to base the interfacing to the fabric. Unlike if you're sewing at home, the basting does not get removed here because that would just take way too much time, so the basting stitch has to be well within the seam allowance. Seam allowances are typically 3 8 of an inch at my job, so the maximum distance away from the edge that the basting stitch can be is a quarter of an inch, but smaller distances like an eighth or a sixteenth are preferred. So I got into the habit of sewing as close to the edge as possible when I'm edge stitching or under stitching, like sometimes half of a sixteenth, which is a thirty-second of an inch. 
and it will probably take me a while to get out of that habit. Those are some of the more interesting things I've learned at my job. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. That would mean so much to me, and I'll see you in the next video.